any corellium. I think things are starting to pick up again. This is, uh, we're on track to waypoint 11 and then 12, I think, is the summit. And we're, our goal is to get to the summit by the end of our watch and have the next watch. Is that what we calculated summit? for three and a half hours, right? Yeah, let's get an update on that. There's a, it, it would behoove us to move quickly, but not too quickly, because there is a bit of a potential tow between waypoint 12 and 13. Uh, but then again, there's not much distance between waypoint 13 and 15, which is the second summit of the site. The tow between possible tow slash water column transit between 12 and 13 is need some light here about a kilometer yeah a little less than a kilometer about two hours away the summit is okay so we're on schedule yeah um yeah we're doing good this um this seamount is it doesn't have as much of a defined peak as the ones previous it's uh it's a bit hummocky up top we are the peak baggers we will get there <laughs> yeah <laughs> um we can move a little bit faster if you're more interested in getting to the top. Like if we went at point three, I don't think it would really compromise our our exploration all that much. I I think we're on pace, so let's let's keep this. Okay. Um, Bridge now. Never know what we're gonna find. That's totally fair. We do not. Let's keep this move going. One hundred meters. Two three zero. I wonder if we su suggested a heading of like 110. Yeah. Just bring it around 30 degrees would be, might smooth things out a little bit. Yeah, we can do that. He just moved, he just bumped it up two moves ago. Um, he started moving it more easterly, so that would be in well, line. And that would put his heading more into the current, which is probably what he would like anyway. Yeah. Bridge, nav. Can you try a different heading, 110? That was correct, right? Sure. Did I? Sure, <laughs> anything anything more that way would be <laughs> fantastic. Did I hear it incorrectly? We seem ha to have nailed the multitasking, move and heading switch. Yeah, so now he's got to move with a heading change. Yeah. Wow. Things, which really, you know, that seems to be within the realm of normal. Go for Zoom. Uh, I don't know, hydroid, an enemy? Yeah, what is that? So it's a type of anemone. I'm looking for secondary set of tentacles that are around the mouth. And I think I see them. Yep. I think. Oh, so a, a little bit short anemone. One? Yep. So there it is. Yeah, secondary set of tentacles, which would indicate that it's a serianthid anemone, so a tube anemone, likely mostly below the sediment. But those are somewhat difficult to collect but uh Shut they have off. a tendency of just disappearing <laughs> although this would be a really good example if you wanted to sample that for try out the panatula spatula <laughs> go wide i feel like we didn't put a panatula spatula on the vehicle that's okay it's still in still in production okay 
Next time. Do you have a spatula a scoop? down there? The scoop is kind of we spatula esque. Yeah. Do you want to sample this? No. Okay. <laughs> it's difficult. No. It looked like it was on a rock to me, but you think it was a tube? Yeah, I think it, it, it's, they're sometimes deceptive. You know, they're right in between the rocks or, or you know, right on the side of the rock. Yeah, I think it's important to have uh, an ROV shop fully equipped with all sorts of cookware. Mm -hmm. You never know what's going to come in handy. Ravioli press. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be five-sided, though. Yeah. We can we'll have to make our one. own. 3D print. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Could machine it out, too. Depends whether That's you like your, like, yeah, additive or subtractive manufacturing. Pick your poison. <laughs> um, so we're doing more of a heading change than a move at the moment, but okay. On this uh, funny story, we had a cruise this summer in the lab that I'm in uh, on the Falcor where. Uh, we were interested in doing some observations of corals uh, more closely, you know, observing them for a shorter period of time. And uh, we developed alongside the ROV team, who are master fabricators, uh, a tool to feed corals in situ uh, to see how they would capture particles. So they developed a syringe mechanism a double syringe mechanism that you could fill with food particles like ground up fish or squid or things like that and um, depress it underwater in the vicinity of a coral and then watch it see if it could you know capture that those food particles out of the water column um and they <laughs> i love the name they gave it it was a uh, 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 coral push popinator 3000 <laughs> They made a label and everything for it. <laughs> Very creative bunch. And um, yeah, we depressed it underwater, fed the coral. Didn't didn't really work to our expectations. Kind of just left like oh, no. fish smuts all over the coral colony. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but, you know, still nutritious food. And delivered. <laughs> this was not in the monument, by the way. We, we didn't want to do that inside the monument. These were sites we visited in international waters. All right, we're underway. It was a, it was a whole sh whole ship activity. We had the, the galley produce the slurry, fish slurry, RV shop fabricating. Do you think they'll try it again? No. <laughs> no, it's, you know, it, it takes a lot of time um, to sit down, set up, get it right, you know, because you, you uh, you can imagine it's kind of a logistical. Well, this is a very interesting rock morphology. I don't even know how to describe this. Maybe, maybe sheet flows. Very stair steppy. Or collapsed, yeah. Pillows, maybe. Yeah, I think. Um. So you only have one, one or two cameras, right? So you have to have the camera trained very closely on the polyp. Uh, that you're trying to view, grab material, and then the ROV pilots need the other cameras to push the syringe at the same time. So it was a bit of a choreography hmm. to try and get it to all work.
Oh, we've we've done things. Have we done things like that here before? We've um, dyed corals before. We've stained corals before. Yeah, yeah. We had a little uh, a little hat that we'd put over top of the coral, and then and squeeze these and check the little mini aquarium with dye, and then left it there for some number of hours, and yep. came back and picked up the took the little hat off. Huh. What were you trying to figure out with that? I think they were trying to stain the yeah. skeleton mm -hmm. um, so you could come back if you were going to visit. This was an area that was commonly visited, so you could come back to the same coral um, and look at, oh, okay. or either sample it or look at how much it's grown in a certain period of time. I think that was on the Gulf. I wanna yep. yeah. Go for Zoom. I'm going to try Mexico. and look at this. To like tagging a coral, thing. essentially. Kind I of, like yeah. Tagging a mini. I have a picture of Ruben wearing the coral stainer. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. Yeah. He's got little white ends yep. to his arms. Corella morpharian. Okay, go wide. Uh, I don't know if it was on this ship, but we've also used that same chamber for um, dyeing tube worms. Lamellibranchia tube worms. Um, their cuticle can be stained and over time it produces more and more layers so you could get a really good H estimate just by staining it on the outside you don't have to sample it you can just measure, measure it yeah we've done we've built all kinds of little different sorts of uh, contraptions for different things A lot of archaeology tools and different types of collection items. We have a hold items. full of archaeology tools. Yeah. Silt props and suction cups and. Yeah, we did one where we had an elevator. We were trying to collect like some dishes and fragile pieces, and uh, we used glass beads to encase the the dishes in the box prior to recovering it, hmm. protect them. Go for zoom. I'm, the, I'm looking at the base of the precious coral maybe that fell over. Yeah. Just recently. Yeah, oh, yeah it's yeah. broken yeah. off Very there. Recently. Just yeah. cracked off. Oh, wow. Yeah, that might be a case where just <laughs> it chose poorly for that rock. Go ahead. Um, Yes. Good eye. The biggest killer of corals are corals themselves. They just get too big for their rock or too big for their base all over. Go for zoom. Oh, crinoid. Yeah, big crinoid. It's working on another arm. The, the coral cutter we we're actually using okay, right now is something that was kind of semi-created with the ROV team from but this particular one was homemade. This one is homemade? Yep. Oh, no kidding. Yep. I had no idea. With the shears and then the soft yeah, uh, yeah. part. The then, grippy uh, part. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of the more effective coral cutters I've seen used. What great. do what are can you describe other coral cutters? I mean, they're they're all similar in concept, right? They have some sort of you know, tubing, usually to hold the sample in place, and then some sort of blade to cut it. Um, usually, like the precision by which you know that whole process comes together, the snipping and the grabbing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the more precise, the more effective kind of cut you're going to get. Um, if you have to start twisting and wrangling it, it probably isn't a good design. But okay. if it produces a clean cut um, you know, without having to 
pull up the whole colony. That's kind of what we're going for. Not a lot of stuff here, um, possibly owing to the, it's a, looks mostly like a talus slope. A lot of this stuff is probably not in place. Could be easily sampled, but we're still a couple hundred meters off our mark for the next collection. Is that collection depth um, going to come before this peak or no? Um, I think it should be at or about a peak, uh, but we'll try and grab something a bit deeper. 1,700 meters or so. Just passing 1,900 now. Seventeen ninety. Go for zoom. Seventeen twenty one is the exact depth. Oh, sponge rubble. Lanicella with uh, Go away. some foraminiferins on it. Is that sponge? Oh, it's still hanging out in the starboard bio box there. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That feels like so long ago. Same dive. This is our third watch on this dive, is that right? Second? Second, third. Uh, third, yeah, we started this whole thing. Oh. We did. We've done double blue water though. We blue water down and then blue water to cross. And oh <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or climbing the next hill. And there's a shark in the wire cam. <laughs> oh, yep, there it is. You can see that shark on channel three. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tiny one. See if it comes back. Yeah, there was a shark circling around at dinner time today, and then some mahi mahi that were swimming around the ship. I don't know if any of you saw them. But they were like this bright, bright blue green color. They're so pretty. I saw the white tip shark, but I didn't see the mahi mahi. Yeah, they're super vibrant. Very cool. Yeah, he was out there again just before our watch, so maybe he'll still be around after. Yeah, little mahi. The mahi shark guy. or the mahi? The mahi. Oh, neat. Okay. <laughs> Ridge snap. I haven't seen it yet either. It's pretty cool. Nice. 100 meters bearing 
you look at this thing over there if you have time? Yeah. Very, very fine branching structure. Oh, I did not even see that. I'm like, he wants to look at the rock. Go for zoom. Oh, well. Nope. I <laughs> blew it. Sorry. It's a funny joke. That wh What's a funny joke? Looking at the rock. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, so this looks like you can also look at the rock, though. Um, yeah, that's really up to you if you want to look at the rock. I think this might be umbellopathies also, it's a type of black coral. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, we we saw one a bit earlier, but this one's a colors. Coloration's I, a bit different. I do not know how you saw that. That was amazing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's a rock, Steve. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm just a biologist, but sometimes we look at rocks, too. Okay. Mm Corals are rock animals. <laughs> sometimes. There are some open questions, though, about where coral communities occur relative to crust compositions that we've been studying out here, uh, Coralie's work. Um, so I'm very interested in seeing how that develops um, because you know, we're very curious where the high density and high diversity coral and sponge communities exist relative to um, enriched crusts or you know, thicker crusts. It's definitely going to be a question that is going to try to be answered in the coming years as we try to evaluate the effects of how um, resource use might impact animal communities in the deep sea here. Go for zoom. What do we have here? Yeah, it's that guy that I'm looking at. Just seems to be at the end of like a long thread. Yeah, I think. I think that one is actually Metallogorgia. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's got this characteristic brittle star on it. Ophia Yep. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, there there are some we saw some imposters earlier in the dive um this morning or yesterday morning. <laughs> um which uh, it was a Chrysogorgia that looked like Metallogorgia, but <laughs> his associate, his associate gave it away. Oh no, kidding! Because o only on Metallogorgia we typically have Ophiocreus, but this one didn't have Ophiocreus, so it's not Metallogorgia. It had a, a separate organism on it. I think it was. Did it have like a shrimp? I feel like we see like Chrysogorgia have shrimp on them a lot. I think it was a shrimp. Yeah. It was a whole twelve hours ago. I don't know. <laughs> Another well, lifetime. Yeah, I have no recollection of how that went. Oh, it's yellow. Yeah, yellow. Let's look at the yellow. <laughs> it's a Steve coral. <laughs> Go for zoom. you tell what it is? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. It's, it's a bit far off. Okay, go wide. So it's a small colony also. Under 10 centimeters. Typically the things we're looking for for these small yellow fans are very, very fine structures within the polyps. Okay. I don't have a lot of time, but I yeah. bet we can get this. It's a small colony, so appreciate whatever you can do. Okay, go for zoom.
So this is a plexorid. This okay, go wide. Um, that, that tells me what I need to know. Okay, great. Yeah, it has a um, has a bit of a um, yeah. That one we sampled on a previous dive. Uh, but Acanthogorgia typically has very tall um, polyps that are you know, stand very straight and erect. Um, this one had. Uh, let me f let me use my octocoral words. Uh, yeah, so the the calyces on a lot of these plexorids are more prominent. Um, the kind of part, the bump that extends off the main branch or axis that um, provides kind of like the cup that the polyp would sit in and retract into. It's more apparent in the plexorids. Uh, sometimes there's very highly modified sclerites that you know are exist in, in and around the calyx. Sometimes they have thorns, sometimes they might be have very unique textures. So if you can usually make that out and you know, any of the other sclerite arrangement is helpful also, but looking at the calyx structure is usually a giveaway. That is, if you can't tell, uh, sometimes the acanthogorgids are, are easier to identify if the polyps are, or the tentacles are retracted a bit. Because uh, you can see some of the sclerites in the body wall. What are these paragorgia colonies with their zoanthid? Ketchup and mustard. <laughs> hmm. Go for zoom. There's something very delicate right next to that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Perigorgia with the zoanthid on it. Yeah. Might be a, a small rodan aridogorgia, maybe. A little lobster tucked in the right, too, maybe? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, a little rock. pink one. Oh, what lobster. Nice spot. Usually you don't find those alone on the rock. Maybe it's just it's waiting for its home to be constructed. <laughs> Go wide. That's good. I think um, we sampled a plexorid a bit deeper uh, on a previous dive. So we know that they can get this deep, 17, 18, maybe 1,900 meters. Although we've seen them as deep as 2,000 or so previous expeditions, Central Pacific.
Oh, Whoa. hi. Hello, Coral. <laughs> Should have seen that one coming. <laughs> the big one. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Josh, do you prefer that altimeter on Argusoff? Do I prefer it? Oh, off? Yeah. Oh. If you are neutral either way, I'd love to turn it on. But if it okay. affects your... No, it doesn't bother me at all, one way or the other. Okay, great. I'm, I usually watch this guy. Yeah, I like that. That it just comes gives up, me something. pops up there. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the main bonus that it has. And I can usually tell if it's bouncing off of like the tether football or something like that. Wow! Look at the size of that base on that bamboo coral. Yeah! Wow! It's probably forty centimeters across. That is a monster. It's branching out in so many di directions, or it looks like. Wow. Can we take, zoom? A, take a second and look at yeah, look at the base of this. Yeah, definitely. Because it still has live tissue on it, which is extraordinary. It's actually, it's overgrowing dead rubble. Oh my that's, gosh! That's, wow. I've never seen that. Huh. That's really cool. Either an old branch or, you know, maybe an ancestor. I'm more impressed that something like this could grow like that. And you know, it does have some damage, um, some tissue loss, some zoanthids. A bunch of squat lobsters in there. But it's persisted in this place. You know, it's reasonably a good 40 centimeters across. Lots of amalgamated uh, bits and pieces incorporating into the skeleton. Lots of associates. Well, there's an s clade in the background too. I can see the yellow. I'm feeling good about my bamboo coral bet dominating the summit here. Okay, go you're on. Yeah, I think you're definitely you, right. I think you're. You must be on. Oh my gosh! Wow. Look at that other one too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But that base, the base of the one we just looked at, was definitely like the the queen bamboo coral. <laughs> Bridge now. So Can we make that wanna, same move 100 meters? One two, thing three, I didn't zero. really assess in looking at the base, I was kind of astounded by it, was the identity of some of these bamboos. I think they're in the family Corrado. I said today, uh, probably, probably J clade, but. What do you need to get that ID? Um, coffee. Uh. <laughs> Start there. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work from there. Oh, okay. Do you no. think you got the imagery you needed yeah, to like, no, we, do it after we, the fact? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we got the imagery. Just I did actually leave my cup of coffee right outside the door. There is an emergency <laughs> cup of coffee. <laughs> wow. If you step outside the door and look to your right on the ground right next to the van, <laughs> it was in the wrong mug to bring in, and I left it outside. Took one yeah. last sip before I ducked in. I, in case of like dire emergencies, this is break glass coffee. <laughs> Because it is cold. <laughs> no, I, and in the I downed a, a cup of yeah coffee unceremoniously <laughs> on the way in. It's like that. My alarm didn't go off this morning. Oh man! But you oh. still got up. It, it's weird. I have a, this internal clock. 
Just yeah, that happened to me yesterday morning, I think. My alarm didn't go off, and I just, like, woke up. That happened to me one day. That's why I missed the gym. Oh, uh, nice, day. but you still got up. It's Eleven. amazing because, oh, like, wow. when my alarm doesn't go off, I just keep sleeping. <laughs> yeah, same here. I, I do not have that ability. I don't, I can't rely on it for the purposes of making it to watch on Making time. it to the midnight watch. Um, pretty much every other watch is fine. That 4 a.m. watch, like, I don't know. No problem. I think the problem was I set my alarm on my phone through Siri, and then Siri was like, nope, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Turned off my Oh, alarms. you trust Siri with your wake-ups? Yeah, I know. Uh, I think, it's a mistake. Uh, yeah, that was a mistake. So uh. I manually set my clocks from now on. <laughs> I'm going to set it for 11 p.m. in the East Coast time zone. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what kind of alarm clock do you have at home? Uh, the sun. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> a child, a four-year-old. Uh, yes, a four-year-old. Oh. Yeah. Mm. No, that's that's not really the, how it works these days. It's getting better. Oh, good. That used to be my alarm clock, but not anymore. It's interesting, near those big bamboo corals, there was a little bit worse visibility. Now we're back yeah. to good visibility here, but not as many corals. The current is gone. It was currenty where those bamboo corals were, and then, like, you know, a few meters up ahead. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not. I love the iridescent color of these sponges. Sponges and sea cucumbers. It, yeah, it almost matches the sea yeah, cucumber. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I thought they were both sponges at first. Oh, that anemone is huge. Where are you? Oh, in the back there. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I thought that was a coral. Are we still looking for cucumbers? Um, not that kind. Uh, okay. Well, actually, hold on. <gasps> Is this, you know are what? we looking at the... No, I don't think it's the right one. Can we zoom in on it, though? Go for zoom. I don't think it's the right one. I think this one is might be Hensonothuria, but I'm just gonna double check. You can zoom out when you need to. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm fine. I'm stable. You got what you need? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Photos, right? We got photos. Okay. Doop, doop, doo, 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 doo. I'd love to get to rock sampling zone. That would be fun. I think we'll make it. Yeah? Yep. I think we will too, because we'll have to start looking for a rock like, I don't know, how many meters early? Can we look 50 meters early? You know, um, let me see what other folks have gotten. So 15 meters off, uh, 11 meters off. Bullseye. 
Yeah, 30 meters off, I think, is probably the most we want to start looking. Okay. 29 meters off. Bathopathies with this little, like, purple, pink squat lobster on it. So, funny. so 100 meters, and we can start looking. Okay. 100 meters in depth. That's 10 lines, 10 contours. Counting with my finger over here. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I've got bad news. What? Oh, no. I don't want to hear bad news. Oh, okay. Well, now we need to hear it, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Caesar's response. Okay. Veto. No bad news. Okay, well, I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll turn on SPL. <laughs> It's two thirty in the morning. I'll We've only got eight contours news. till the till the peak. Only eight. Yeah. Are you sure that's bad news? Oh, that means that we can't get the rock sample it's at the peak. Eight meters away. Let's see. I got notes that say waypoint twelve is at seventeen hundred and seventy nine meters. Yeah, that's. Yeah. You're more right. than forty meters off. Steve. Steve. Weigh in. Which one are you? Me, Steve? Um, you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Science Steve. Let's get one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great video. Steve's in charge now. <laughs> <laughs> Just switch seats one day. <laughs> um, the summit is 70 meters shy of 1,700 meters. Right. 80 meters shy. And then there's a, a trough, and then we go up another peak. Is that right? Or the next watch would try that? Yes. Um, here, let me. I think if, yeah, if we, let's see what time we got. I think it'll take another hour to get to waypoint 12. Um, yeah, about that's, a little, yeah, hour. That's pretty good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus some rock sampling time. That should bring us right about to watch change by the time they get to the summit and they can decide if they want to um, drive with bottom contact or if they want to tow. Because uh, say, you know, say they get to 1700 meters, what's the ascent time from 1700 meters to the surface? Stand by. A couple hours. I guess. Yeah, just under two hours. Yeah. So they'll have time to poke around there, decide if they want to zoom over there quickly in the midwater or drive on the seafloor. At least we'll have accomplished all of our sampling objectives for the dive by the time we get to waypoint 12 uh, in terms of rocks and water, which is the big deal. So you're saying you do want to get a rock? We will get a rock, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's that nice All of that. sedimented in concrete rocks at the yeah, top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sounded very confident. I'm not the one who has to do the picking, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I, I could. Yeah, we should start looking now, I think, because I'm not, not optimistic based on how this looks. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty... Cementy. Oh, even though we're like 100 meters early? Let's keep our eyes out. Okay. Yeah, it did, like, 20 meters ago, there were tons of rocks. And it's like the seamount heard what we were talking about. <laughs> Anytime we see loose rocks, just drop a target, just, just in case. <laughs> so we can go back. I don't know, it's so hard. It's deceiving what it looks is. loose and what is loose. I'm going to send everyone on a wild goose hunt.
I imagine we'll start to see probably some more biology as we start to get on the rim of the top of the seamount. It's probably in a shadow here. Current's probably coming across the See a little chain of bamboo corals and argus just to the right of her. Yeah, I know. I was looking at them in starboard camera. I'm like, how did I miss those? There's a whole bunch of corals there. What is it? Can we look off to the left? There's a chitin, I think, in the rock. Oh, yeah, totally. I love these guys. I was wondering They're what super it is cool. making these traces. I'm seeing a bunch of feeding traces. Oh, yeah. Go for zoom. Oh, oh yeah, you can see the armoring on it. Oh, yeah, they great. look so cool. We have one down in the lab if anyone wants, wants to come take a look. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we sampled one last cruise. Oh, I didn't realize we collected them. Actually, a, a pair of them, in fact. Was it a scrape and slurp? Well, yeah, yeah it wasn't too hardly attached. Really? Oh, yeah. sometimes they're tough to scrape off. Yeah, they look like they're, like... They look kind of like a mini trawl resistant frame or something like that. They're like <laughs> that's the mini TRF. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Go wide. <laughs> it's uh, it's something that the cable observatories use as nodes, like junction boxes on the seafloor. But they build them so that they're kind of shaped so help reduce getting caught up in trawl nets. So they're called trawl resistant frames. Yeah, they are. They look like big chitons, basically. They're like, they shed fishing gear, in theory. Well, yeah. Not very good, <laughs> actually, at being trawl resistant. I think chitons are probably better at it. Yeah. But yeah, it makes them hard to scrape up. Look at this coral. It's Enormous. crazy. Yeah. Go for zoom. You're out of auto XY, right? I am. Barnacles, ophiocanthid, uh, brittle stars. So this one is a. Uh, looks like it could be a nodal brancher. Or just above the node. just above the node branching. Okay, go wide. So neat. Must press on. Do chitons swim? Do they, they do crawl? Not. Okay. They, uh, they're more like shufflers. <laughs> <laughs> they look like little potato bugs. They look like little ice pods. Yeah. Yeah. They, and they would be one that would have a radula, right? That would just scrape away on the rock. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. They have a muscular foot, like snails. They can use. Oh, to. they're not leggy. They're not what? They don't have legs like an isopod. They don't have legs. No. Oh. Muscular feet. The segments. So, is it actually segmented? Uh, it's not segmented in the way that you see the plates there. Yeah. It's, they're just the plates are semi-articulated. Yeah, so they can. That's pretty wild. There's generally eight of them, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah I think that's that right. like feels very arthropody. Like I would have guessed isopod. Mm. Or uh, sorry, not. Is it arthropod that I mean? Yeah, I think so. I yeah, guess I mean the shelled critter. Isopods do have similar types of you know, shell morphologies. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the yeah, these but are unrelated. Clearly, yeah, pretty clearly mollusks. They, if you turn them over, it looks very similar to something like a limpet. Okay, got it's it. It's cool to see them in this white color. I'm used to them in like the intertidal zone, where they are often like covered in kind of mossy looking. Material. Bridge, Nav. One hundred meters bearing two three zero, please. I think 
This will Thank be a, you. this will be a good um, good pace of things. We'll process samples through the morning today, which is always good. So do it during evening. Might even get a, a brief nap in before we have to be up uh, at eight o'clock again to process samples. Oh my gosh! I do feel for the for the back row right now. Yeah. And then we launch at noon in theory. Yeah. To get That's those jars plan. cleaned out. Oh, That's so scary. Thankfully, we don't have any push cores, so let's take time. Do we? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, no push cores. Has something oh, happened yeah. overnight? <laughs> the, pa the panic in your voice there. <laughs> Do we? Oh, God. Magically a found attack. a sandy spot on the side of a mountain. <laughs> I don't know, 8 to 12 always seems to come up with something. <laughs> My gut is feeling a little bit more uneasy uh, the more we go on here because it's, not yeah, very, it's yeah, looking pretty uh, familiar to the last time we were hunting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even think it's largely crust here. I think it's just sheet flows. Yeah. Mm, you know, yeah. Some crust. It's the the map would have us believe that this is like the shallow part of the slope. Yeah. It doesn't feel very shallow, really. I am trying to stay stretched out so that if there is something, we can. We can snag it, like this rubble right in front yeah. of us. What do you think? No. Oh, yes. No. Nope. No. It was Cemented. just a trick of the light. Every time. Looks like there's all, like, it'd be interesting to see what's in this little plateau area once yeah. we get up a little higher. Yeah. So when you say shallow slope, you're using shallow as the opposite of steep? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would say mellow, but is shallow a more accurate term? I don't know. Seems mellow seems like a good one. I think as long as I think mellow is a better better at communicating because shallow might indicate sh surely like purple there. Yeah, yeah, there is something purple. Per per I can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> Perplexing. <laughs> But I guess if you use it with the Go word slope, then it yeah, it's not it's clear. There you go. There's their first Victor Gorgia. Go the dive. Just a wee one. It's right about where they come in. 1800, 1700 meters to 1900 meters, maybe. Just a wonderful color. Okay, go on. We're hunting rocks. Shh. Be way, 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 way quiet. <laughs> oh, hey. There's really big bathopathies. Wow, yeah. Kind of eating the light, huh? Yeah. Very dark. And where is it? Squat lobster. Whoa. At least one. Go for zoom. Are you having flashbacks? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Consistently have flashbacks about this particular coral. PTSD. It's a ridiculous little squat lobster that you cannot shake off for anything. So the squat lobster is one we sampled also last expedition. Um, I think it's it, it, probably a new species in the genus uh, Europtychus. Okay, go on. I'm getting about 10 meters from the yeah, wall I right now. Yeah, I see that. Thank you. 
Time to come up. We've got a viewer wondering what samples we did collect on this cruise that you all will have to sample once we ascend. So we've got clipping of coral from this watch. Have we collected it? What else have we collected, Ashley? Um, yeah, we've got a lot Thanks, of Josh. coral. Um, we've got a lot of rocks as well, which is exciting. We have a crinoid which I'm pretty excited about because I've never actually like seen one in person. So Ooh. that's oh. really cool. Uh, we've got a cup coral and a very large dead sponge stalk, which is still sticking out of the <laughs> starboard borrow box. So Partly sampled. Partly sampled. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. Oh, hey. Okay. You'll notice that this other bathy bathy's colony probably doesn't have that same associate on it. It's yeah, it doesn't. Indicative that, yeah, there's two it's different not the species same. here. It's not the same species. That's interesting. The associates, okay. they know. <laughs> I need to do a slightly better job of staying uphill here. <laughs> 